And at the time, it was just a bad idea. And I did not love the music. I did not care about the fans. I did not want to tour. It had nothing to do with it. It had to do with, I was worried that if I put all my eggs in one basket, that that basket was gonna you know, drop into the lower regions of hell. And I would never see those eggs again. Yeah, that was that was definitely a strange time. I, I think the coolest thing about that whole era was the fact that of becoming friends with Corey, because Corey was one of the most genuine, awesome dudes that I've ever been in contact with. And the band was, I mean, we definitely toured a lot, and I think that touring really, really hurt everybody. And I think that the attitudes and the problems that we had really stemmed, and I finally saw that tour, like what it was gonna be like with Jesse, and the way he was, and the way he always wanted to quit, and the way he would hate everything and be disappointed in everything. Those tours were the first time I really saw that. And the weirdest thing about the whole situation was for me, Jesse was never combative towards me, and he was never ever like real, I don't even know how to explain it, just, he didn't give attitude to me, but I saw it in everything. And I saw the way he treated other people, and I saw the way he, he reacted to situations. And, and it just, that definitely was a time where I wanted it to be over, for sure. I didn't want to do the band anymore. And Corey came in to fix you know, what was broken, but it was never a, a real fix. Was there ever a time where you just like were sitting in the van and you looked around and you were like, where is everybody? Like, where's Russ? Where's Dan? Like, what happened? Like, every day. Every day. I mean, I don't know. You, you kind of get blinded by your own want for success. And I think that all, all the stuff that happened in that era, era, now that I look back on it, it was just such a wrong decision to do. And even though, like you just said, how I wouldn't trade anything for, you know, Corey's friendship because that was the coolest thing out of that whole thing. But at the same time, I mean, you have, you know, two members of a band that were such integral, important parts of a band, and to not have them there with you, it it just it it was completely wrong. It was like if I would see Led Zeppelin with Robert Plant and like Guns N' Roses behind him or something, like it was just horrible to, to look around and, and see what it turned into because at that time I mean the tours were going good the band was doing a little better than it was and we were starting to actually kind of make a little bit of money and make a career out of it but it just it just wasn't Zayo I mean and the saddest thing about it is Jesse had me believing that as long as Jesse was a part of it it would be Zayo but you know, the more and more the time went on, you definitely realized what the most important parts of the band were. In my opinion, as a fan of Zayo, uh, as someone who, who really respects deeply what Zayo has done, Dan has always been uh, the focal point of the band. Uh, Dan's lyrics, Dan live, uh, Dan on stage, I mean everything about Zayo to me for, for so long was Dan. Um, and a lot of times I think with, with kids when they had a different singer, it was very difficult for that to, uh, to transfer well because Dan was such a, even though he was so reluctant to be a spokesman for the band. He was the face of Zayo to many people, um, both on stage and, and on record. Uh, so I think that, you know, they had great, you know, some great guys on, on tour with them when Dan wasn't in the band, but it, the reality was it wasn't a Zayo. It wasn't a Zayo that people paid to see. It wasn't a Zayo that, uh, that people wanted to, to, to buy on record as well. What happened on that show was I walked on stage and I knew Jesse was hanging out with a bunch of his friends and we were all hanging out back there and it was fun. There was like a little backstage area that we all hung out. Dan was there. We were just having a good time. And we went up on stage and I definitely knew beforehand that, that Jesse was completely incapacitated. And 
But it was so much fun, and we were just hanging out. And I, I was like, whatever, it's, this will be cool. Well, we get up on stage, and second song in, he is pretty much off of every timing part of the songs and stopping early every time on every part. I got freaking jacked out of my skull, went on stage, thought I could do it, did it for years. The mix is a little different in my brain. Um, screwed up the show. And I'm playing, I'm trying to like compensate for all this mess up and I couldn't do it anymore. And the running thought was that I kind of screamed at Jesse and yelled at him and we walked off stage. But actually what happened was I walked over to his drum set and I looked at him and I'm like, uh, I don't think we can play these songs, man. You're a little too messed up. Instead of embarrassing ourselves, let's get the hell off the stage. And that's all really it was. I'm incapacitated. I can't play our songs, I'm sorry. This is pretty much like the last freaking bit. Like, I don't think David's gonna be a band much longer, man. So thank you. Didn't give a f not a damn. Seriously, just didn't care. I, I, I hated Scott for what we had let each other become. I hated myself that I was playing in a lie. I'd always had a bad, and I still have a problem with it to this day. Stay away from the Christian music scene. Don't take something as precious as the name of Jesus and sell it to people that are morons. If, if you're a kid out there and you love the Lord, you know, it, just, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Music is music, you are you. Get over yourself, for fuck's sake, please, get over yourself. You know, people sin, that's why you're a Christian. Because Jesus died on the cross and his blood is what forgives you. You know, I'm not saying don't use his grace as an excuse or a credit card, but be yourself, you know, it's like, and we had definitely not became, well, not we, I can't speak for them. I, had, I was not myself anymore. I was in this band and I wasn't happy with the music. I was playing the drums and, you know, I was glad. And there was so much tension there too because Corey was finally sick and tired of Jesse's attitude and sick and tired of what Jesse would treat him like because he was, you know, a new fill-in member. So I'm, any band, that, type, that person's gonna get the brunt of garbage. That, Je that Corey didn't want to be in the band anyway and Corey wanted to quit and, and we were supposed to do a little week-long tour with Ethereum and I knew it was just gonna be hell if we'd go on this tour anyway. So I walked back there and it was almost like a whole decision without even saying it that we just would break up so we wouldn't have to do this tour because everybody's pissed off anyway. <laughs> Rob well, started crying, which blew me away. I was like, he's at the bar and he's crying. I was cracking up, having a freaking like, they were embarrassed and ashamed and I wanted to get on stage and be like, yeah, all of you, suck it, you know? Because we're not your little freaking treasure. And the Juliana Theory is mad because we outdid them because we just broke up on stage in front of 1,500 people. So Brett's pissed because his little acoustic encore isn't gonna work. <laughs> I was just like, it's hilarious. I was like, I thought it was great. So I went to the van and told everybody, and, and it hurt me bad on the drive home because I was like, I just hurt Scott. I just totally disappointed Corey. Me and Jesse never yelled at each other. And actually, the funny thing is, is after the show and after we broke up and all that stuff and everything happened the way it did, we walked down together, me and Jesse, to the alley. And he's like, are you mad at me, dude? And I'm like, honestly, not at all, dude. I'm kind of glad we're not doing this tour. <laughs> the next morning after we break up, you know, all these people are calling me. Is it true? Is it true? Is this a scam? Is this, is this Zayo? You know, because, I mean, it fueled the fire. By this point, my relationship with Tooth and Nail, completely crazy. Not good. Feeling a little ripped off. Scott's starting to feel a little ripped off because he's been on two records. Nobody's getting royalty checks. Our friends' bands are, but we're not. You know, every once in a while, you know, whatever is coming in. So, you know, beside the point, but like we're starting to get like a little chapped, you know, and um, I, I knew it was done. I thought it was it.